Hey y'all, and welcome back to another episode of TZ Teaches. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a basic Roman-esque pillar, something that you might see either in a coliseum or, you know, on the rich white lady's front lawn or back porch holding up a ridiculous thing. I don't know. But, you know, just a basic one. Now, we're not going to get super ornate, and we're not going to get into any textures or anything. This is just how we model it. And I'm throwing this out there because a lot of the model of pillar videos are pretty long and kind of boring. So I'm going to show you guys how to do this really, really fast using the spin tool. All right. So what I'm going to do first, we'll just move that out of the way. And we will, you know, this is what we're looking in the layout workspace. But I'll just be in the modeling workspace for a little bit. And we will add in a plane. Now, how are we going to create this from a plane? Well, we're using the spin tool, so don't worry about it too much. Uh, and I'm just going to call this Pillar Remake. Always important, name your objects. I actually should probably name the original to Pillar, but nevertheless. Okay, so we have this. We're going to go into Edit Mode, and I'm actually just going to delete all of these vertices. Now, why did I delete those vertices? Well, I deleted them because, one, I don't need them, and two, you can actually create geometry yourself using uh, control and right click. And then if you right click again, it will actually create geometry for you. So let's say I want to make a pillar that looks like the one we've got. So maybe I take it in, maybe there's a curve like this and it comes down. Maybe there's a curve, maybe it goes out like that. I don't know, something like that. Now I drew this annotation by holding the D key and clicking and dragging, and that gets you our annotation uh, tool. You can also you know, switch up some of these other ones if you really need to annotate and work with what you're, you know, draw out what you've got in your head. But for now, just know that's how I pulled that off. All right, so all you have to do is just kind of, once you've outlined your idea, Control, right click your way to basically outlining the whole thing and then move the vertices where you want them. And we'll go all the way up here and just say something like that, maybe to here, here. Maybe it comes up and then back here. Now, the one thing that's important is that you grab the top vertex and I'm actually going to just clear off this annotation marking here real quick. You want to grab the very top vertex and the very bottom vertex, and you want to snap those to wherever that 3D cursor is in the middle of it. So I'm going to rotate and use the spin tool to rotate around the Z axis. So I want to find out where the 3D cursor is located um, so that I can make sure that it's rotated around its, its axis. So right now I can see that the 3D cursor is at 0, 0, 0. So I want to make sure these vertices are actually at zero on the Y and zero on the X. And it doesn't matter to me where they're at on the Z because we're just going to spin them around. However, I do want to make sure that the bottom vertices, um, actually, apparently that did not move both of them. So select them one at a time and move their actual values to zero, zero uh, for X and Y. Right. Then what I want to do is I'm going to grab the bottom and hit scale Z zero. And that's going to make this perfectly flat because it will average the distance on the Z axis to zero between these two. And I'll do the same thing at the top. So S Z zero makes that perfectly flat. And since these are both now at zero on the X and Y axes, all I have to do is grab everything, grab the spin tool, and then make sure it's rotating around the Z axis. And then the last thing is simply click the plus button. Now we've gone ahead, we've made our tool and maybe I don't like it perfectly. Well, if I don't like it perfectly, I can just real quick undo that. And let's go back and just grab single vertices here and let's move these in on the X axis. I want those to be a little bit further out. And so you can really quick just reshape these things grab everything again, hit the plus button, and I'm actually much more happy with this pillar. So I think I'll keep it the way that it is. The last thing you want to do though, um, 
Actually, let's do that just so I can show you. The last thing you want to do is you want to check to make sure that the angle is actually at 360 degrees. Because let's say we were to take this and maybe do that just a little bit. Right? It might not merge completely correct. So if we were to take this all the way up and you know it hits 360, but if we look at it, maybe it was 359 point whatever, which can happen. If you move it to 360, it should auto merge the vertices. But if we select the vertex up here, you notice that it's only highlighting this one line. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna select everything, go up to mesh, clean up, and then remove doubles. And that will remove 16 vertices there. And now this one vertex is connected on everything and these are all connected all the way around. All right, and then maybe I think that's still a little bit too fat, so we'll go ahead and grab the scale tool. And if I click on this blue square, what it will allow me to do is scale on the X and Y axes without scaling any on the Z. And there we go. We have a basic standard wood, uh, Roman pillar or Roman-esque pillar. And, you know, it took us like five minutes. So that's pretty much it. That's how you create a standard Roman pillar using the spin tool. It is perhaps the fastest way to do it for a basic pillar. If you need to get more detailed, though, there are more complicated ways. And I'm sure I'll be coming out with a video in, in the future to cover those ways as well. But this is the fastest way to do it for just a real quick pillar. If you guys found this video helpful, that's awesome. I'm glad it helped you. If you could hit that like button, uh, that would be much appreciated for me. If you like my content, please subscribe. And if there's anything that you would like a walkthrough on how to create, put that in the comments. I'll be more than happy to help uh, create things for you guys if you're interested. I'm Sir Pinkbeard. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.